In this video, we're going to go over Pascal's Law. Pascal's Law is the idea that the pressure at a point within a fluid acts in all directions. So it's not like pressure at one point only acts up or down or to the left. The pressure acts in all directions. As a consequence of this, if there is a change in pressure at any point within a fluid, that pressure change is equally transmitted throughout the entire fluid. Now, a very good example of how this works is hydraulic presses. So a hydraulic press essentially has a container that is filled with fluid. So this region here is filled with fluid and it has two ends and both of them essentially have this piston that can be moved up and down. And one side has a smaller area, so we can call this A1, and this side over here has a larger cross-sectional area, A2. So essentially what people do with hydraulic presses is you can push down on one side to introduce a pressure in the fluid, that pressure gets transmitted in all directions and essentially produces the same pressure at the second position, at this other piston. And by Pascal's law, the pressure is equally transmitted. So when someone essentially applies a force, so here is going to be the input force, it's going to introduce a pressure because this force is applied over this area. And whatever pressure that gets produced, P1, is going to be equal to the pressure at P2. But the difference between the pressure at point one and point two is when you push down on this piston, it is pushing the larger piston up. So this could be very helpful for lifting large and heavy objects. And of course, if you're generating a pressure up on this piston, then you're going to get some sort of an output force. So how can we relate the two? Well, again, Pascal's law is saying that the pressure change is equally transmitted throughout the entire fluid. So at this point over here, we're adding pressure when we apply a force down on that piston area. So there is some pressure being exerted at this position at point one, and that's gonna result in an equal pressure at point two. And since pressure is equal to force over area, we know what the forces are, we know that P1 is going to be equal to the input force divided by A1, and this is going to be equal to the output force divided by A2. This is essentially Pascal's law. The pressure at one point is equal to the pressure at the other point. But just because the pressure is the same at both points does not mean you get a same force at both points. In fact, if we rearrange this equation, we can solve for the output force. The output force is actually going to be equal to A2 being multiplied over A2 over A1 times the input force. So A2 over A1, you notice is going to be greater than 1, right? A2 is much larger than A1. So if the area was 4 times larger, at the larger piston than the smaller piston, then the output force is going to be four times greater than the input force. So this is showing the utility of the hydraulic press. By virtue of the fact that the pressure is constant everywhere, you can produce forces of different magnitudes at different points in the piston. So this is also very handy to keep in mind if you're trying to calculate what is the output force you get when you push down on the smaller piston. At the same time, an important thing to understand is here we are putting in a weaker force and we're getting a larger output force. This should remind you of the idea of simple machines which we discussed in our physics videos on work and energy. And indeed, that's, this is a similar idea. Even though the hydraulic press will amplify the force that we provide, our input force, it will not change the amount of work done. So that means the input work has to be equal to the output work. And since work we know is equal to force times displacement, then you can take the input force 
multiply that by the displacement at point one, uh, which essentially is going to be how far this piston moves down, right? This is D1, and D2 is how far this piston moves up. And then you have uh, F output times D2. And what you should be able to recognize from this equation is, since the input force is less than the output force, then D1 has to be greater than D2. Meaning that with this hydraulic press, when you push down some distance, you get a greater force on the other end, but the piston also moves a much smaller height. So for example, if this piston was four times larger than this piston, if you push down a distance of one meter, the other piston would only move up by a quarter of a meter. So very similar to the idea of simple machines, the hydraulic press can give you a greater force, but to do the same amount of work, you have to apply the force over a greater distance.